I had a perfectly regular Australian childhood in that I went down the beach and went bait fishing heaps when I was a little kid. And then we moved back to the mountains. I was probably about eight and I saw a dude fly fishing and I was just like, that is legit. Like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I, I remember because I was wearing skate shoes and cargo shorts at the time and I walked in the river behind him, scaring this pot of fish that he was fishing to. Instead of getting angry, this guy was just like, okay, cool, so if you wanna catch these fish, this is what you gotta do. And I had no idea at the time, but then going through, you know, school and later high school, there are fly fishing books in libraries, if you look for them. And the librarians used to literally give me the books because no one else would rent them out. And so I'd just get all the books from the library and read them and then try and build these rods and make flies and catch fish. It didn't work very well. Please don't take my man. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Mickey, Mikey, Mike, Michael, Gore Patrol. I think I normally go with Mickey. I've, I've run with the Mickey. I first met Mickey on the Yukonbean River. Our guiding business was growing really well at the time. Honestly, I just reached out. I was like, if you wanna come and work for us, um, I'm sure we can pack out your days with plenty of guiding and plenty of other cool trips. And it just sort of went from there. And he'd gone over to Montana. He'd learnt from the guys over there around the drift boat stuff. Over there, it's fantastic. And everyone there fishes. Everyone there's a fly fisherman, you know? And I ended up falling in with a really, like those guys over there did so much for me, like just said, right, here's how you guide. Here's how you do this. Here's, they've been massive, massively influential. Yep, decent round. In the net. <laughs> this is actually a really big fish. <laughs> It's one of my best brown trout for the season. Look at that thing. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, you know, places like Tumut, Mickey has really done an excellent job there. When we first started guiding that, it wasn't as consistent. This particular year and the one before, like he just got in there and he fished it and fished it and tried different things. I've never seen anyone be able to fish that river as consistent as Mickey does and guide people on to fish there consistently. Awesome Tumut River brownie. Make it healthy. You'll often hear guys say, oh, you know, it's not about the fishing, it's about everything else, which is entirely true, as long as you can consistently catch fish. <laughs> One of the best things is seeing people come to me and have a different experience every single time because something's always gonna change. You know, you're gonna be in a different place. The fish are definitely gonna be in a different place doing a different thing, you know. So it's it's like a never-ending circle because there's always something you can learn. If you think there isn't, then you're kidding yourself. And the reward is uh, taking someone through that journey and that process and getting the result. When we see the result and we see the joy in that person we're teaching, uh, that's what drives any guy, or that's probably what should drive them. It's the enjoyment of others and just seeing the look on their face and you feel it through them. It's like this weird transient experience where you get to relive all of that at the same level of enthusiasm as if you were like 16. I'm happy to say probably one of the only critiques I ever had of Mickey in the early days was somebody said he was way too enthusiastic. <laughs> um, and to be honest, I'd rather that over somebody that just has no conversation, is dull, that brings you down all day if you're not a good fisherman. You know, you need a guy that um, keeps upbeat, that uh, knows the fishery well, that can laugh with you and cry with you when you have those moments too. Yep, yep.
I think for Mickey, you know, he loves all the styles of fishing. He's not the sort of guy that's prejudiced against any species, any scenario. You know, he loves the double hand stuff. He loves dry fly, he loves nymphing, he loves throwing streamers, he loves saltwater, he loves native uh, fishing for Murray Cod and Golden Perch. Like trout are fantastic and they're my bread and butter, they're my workhorse fish, like and I'll, every trout I catch I'm still, you know, that's a cool fish, you know. But when it comes down to it, like I'm going to be spending all winter freezing my butt off chasing more goo monsters, man, because it's sick. When you see something like that open its mouth and just inhale and you've made it happen, you know, it's gnarly. And you can't do it anywhere else in the world. It's so heavy. It's so heavy, man. And you know, we always joke that uh, most footage of Mickey is just um, a compilation of him laughing in, in different tones because that's the kind of guy that he is. You know, if he stuffs up, he's laughing. If he has a good moment, he's laughing. How's the weather? This is perfect, actually. That's what I like to see. It's good stuff. Like, what I'm doing is what I should be doing. I have no second thoughts or what ifs because I know I am where I want to be. I know I'm doing what I want to do. You know, I wake up excited to go to work every day. I can't spend more than two minutes sitting down behind a computer without getting antsy. So say I won the lotto tomorrow, what would I be doing? I'd still be doing this because you still get to go out and get that sense of achievement of not only understanding something so that you can go do it, but understanding something to the level where you can get someone who's never done it before to go out and do it as well, that's the measure. That's where it's at. get to like the third take of this and there'll be this beer that magically goes up and down while I'm drinking it. <laughs> <laughs>